Hello and welcome back to the Comparative and Omics Tools in Biopsych webinar series, Part 2, The Cellular Omics Viewer. Once again, I'm Alexander Shearer, speaking on behalf of the Bioinformatics Research Group at SRI International, and I'm going to be telling you about things that are available from biopsych.org. In Part 1, we showed you an overview of the cellular overview diagram. Uh, what it contains, what you can view with it, using it to view different organisms. And in part two, we're going to tell you how you can use that to view omics data. And you recall we ended on the Biosite query page, because the query page is how you access both the overview diagram, and you can see we've already accessed it there, and the omics viewer. And we have our little icon over here of a section of the metabolic map to remind you of what you can access at this point on the page. The purpose of the omics viewer is to provide an intuitive visual display of large data sets. It allows the identification of concerted changes in pathways and whole sections of the metabolic network. It can support data from expression, proteomics, metabolomics, and pretty much anything in which a number is attached to genes, proteins, reactions, or metabolites. We also have available right now only on the desktop version, but soon on the web version, uh, omics viewers that will let you display omics data on the whole genome and on the genetic regulatory network. And we'll be talking about those in a future webinar. For example, for today's webinar series, I've taken some gene expression data sets from the University of Oklahoma's E. coli gene expression database. Uh, and these are stored as tab delimited text files, which is perfect for the omics viewer. And as I'm mentioning that, I'm actually going to show you what the data file we're going to be working with looks like. Um, and I like to do this uh, for a couple of reasons, so I'll bring that up now. This is the example omics data file I'm going to be using today for most of the presentation. This is a gene expression study. It's the response of E. coli to peroxide exposure. And you can see this is a tab delimited text file. Uh, the first column down on the left there are the B numbers for E. coli genes. The subsequent columns are data values for those genes for each time point in this data set. And I like to bring this up because, of course, this is not really intuitive and is kind of gibberish if you just have to stare at it. Today we're going to show you how to put this into a metabolic context using the cellular omics viewer. So let's go back to the omics viewer now. So once again, here we are at the query page, and I'm just going to go over and click on omics viewer. And you'll note once again that up at the top I have E. coli K12 selected. And let's click here. So here we are on the Pathway Tools Omics Viewer page. Now, you can see at a glance we have a lot of information packed into this page. And in fact, most of the information you need to know to use the Omics Viewer should be on this page. So if you don't want to go back and refer to this webinar or other documentation we have, you should be able to find it right here if you forget something while you're working with the Omics Viewer. On the left, we remind you what it can be used for. We have additional links, including sample data files and displays. And if we scroll down, uh, some additional information there. But I'm going to go back up to the top of the page and see from top to bottom what do we need to put in to use the omics viewer. So at the very top we have this drop down menu that lets us select a data set and if I click on this you'll see that I have access to all the tier 1, 2, and 3 databases in the Biosite collection. We're going to stick with E. coli because we're looking at an E. coli data set. Then we have this entry point, which asks for a file containing experimental data. As we emphasized, not a URL. What we're actually asking you for is a tab delimited text file on your desktop somewhere. And you're going to upload it just like you'd upload something to a Gmail or Yahoo Mail account or a whole bunch of other websites. So I click on Browse here. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And I have this stored in webinars, because I'm giving a webinar in scripts and under comparative and omics. So now you know how I'm organizing things. And the one we're going to use first is the one I showed you, and that's exampleomics.txt. And that's that tab delimited file I showed you at the beginning. Then it asks, do you want to display absolute or relative data values? In this case, we're going to use relative values. Uh, relative values means that before we ever got around to uploading this tab delimited text file, we normalize the data. We've already compared our two 
fluorescent colors are however we did this and we have our baseline data set and our data each time point we've normalized everything we don't need to do any additional processing but if you wanted to do that right here you could uh, but in most cases I found that omics data that people have you already are going to have done all that normalization stuff before you come here then if you're displaying relative data values are you using a single data column or the ratio of two so we're doing a single data column we could do the ratio of two again if we wanted to do relative but we still hadn't done some normalization ourselves then for data values use a zero centered scale that's a log scale or a one centered scale and so the zero centered scale assumes log data units so it can actually accept negative numbers a one centered scale as it says here uh, won't accept negative numbers and you'll want to remember to pick the right one if you pick the wrong one that does not match your data set then I'll show you a little bit about what you can expect to see later if you make that kind of error in entry then the items in the first column of your data file are and now we click here this is another drop down menu and we're again able to select genes proteins compounds reactions or any of the above now the any of the above option is kind of interesting because you might want to show both gene and protein fold change levels at the same time the one thing to keep in mind of course is that not all cellular components change over the same fold area so it may not be meaningful if you show genes and reaction fluxes or genes and compounds for example so we'll stick with genes for now because that's what we're looking at and notice here it says the items in the first zeroth column so one of the features of the software that we're using here is that things are numbered in general 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and as a consequence what you might think of as the first column in your data set is really the zeroth column now this is actually ends up being handy because if we go back and look at our data set again then we see that there's a lot of value in terms of thinking about this intuitively in having column zero be these which are the genes or whatever else it's going to be proteins in a proteomics file etc and then this is column one this is column two this is column three I find this incredibly handy because of course this is time point one this is time point two this is time point three and so on so it actually becomes much more intuitive to have it work that way you just need to remember that when you're selecting an individual column say that you want to look at so now let's go back to the omics page and do exactly that so here we can enter which columns we want to look at and right now we're going to start by entering a single column I'm going to pick something in the middle of the experiment so let's go for column 6 and this is actually a 12 time point experiment so we're going toward roughly the middle of the time course and we can enter more columns and I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later that will actually yield an animation but for now we're just going to look at a single column single data set and as I scroll down you can also play with the color scheme let's just leave that there color scheme you have a number of options we're going to start with the full color spectrum computed from data provided and that's our default condition it's going to give you a full range of colors and I'm just going to go ahead and show you what that looks like right now at the bottom you also have display options such as paint data on the overview chart that's our default you can also generate a table of individual pathways that exceed a certain threshold and you can combine both displays though you can't do that for animations I'll show you in turn what each of those looks like but for now remember that we're looking at a single data data point we're looking with the full color spectrum computed from the data and we're painting the data on an overview chart so this is a very default way to look at a single data set so let's hit submit and see what happens